Good morning. If anybody would like confession today, Father Memo and I will be available. That's why I became a priest. Deacon, look at you. <laughs> One, two. Good morning. Please stand and join our entrance song. Sing a new song, number 554 and Breaking Bread. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Body and blood. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You deny the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you, the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the from the dead, of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to the fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face 
security to my dwelling. Lord, let let your face shine on us. A reading from the letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples encountered what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. That is, I myself. 
touch me and see, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I haven't been following the news too much, but I know that tomorrow is the fifth anniversary of, of the fire in the Cathedral of Notre Dame in, in Paris. We all remember that experience when that fire happened. And um, it was worldwide news, and everyone was kind of riveted to see that, and that moment when the when that incredible ancient steeple just crashed to the ground on fire. It was so dramatic and, I dare say, painful to watch that. And the good news is that so many people working together, it's going to be done soon. They say by the end of this year, the, the Cathedral of Notre Dame will be completely restored. And if you've seen video of it, they've now they've, they've removed the scaffolding, at least around the spire. It keeps... Lower and lower. And um, they made what I think is the wise decision to, to renew that spire that crashed um, exactly how it was and not do something different or more modern. They wanted to restore it. You know, it was at the time of the, the fire, like, not all these stories came out. It was only after, even months after and sometimes years where People told the stories that happened. And I recently came across the story of the priest chaplain of the fire department of, of Paris about what his experience was like. And I wanted to share it with you and see how amazing it is what, what happened. An interesting thing to note that traditionally the Cathedral of Notre Dame, the Cathedral of Paris contains an ancient relic of, of the crown of thorns. Not that we have absolute faith that, that, that we have to believe that, but I like to think it, it was maintained and, and preserved and present there. At least uh, many, many centuries it's been in, in the cathedral of, of Notre Dame. He described what it was like when he got to the scene and he because he was the chaplain of the fire department he was allowed to go in really with a twofold mission to save the crown of thorns and even more importantly to save the blessed sacrament from the tabernacle this is what he said we had a vision of what hell might be like like waterfalls of fire pouring down from the openings in the roof Due to that downfall, not only of the spire, but also of the other smaller debris in the choir. Um, he says, he wanted to explain that everybody understands the value, historical value, devotional value of the crown of thorns. Um, but the, the blessed sacrament, the Holy Eucharist that he had to save from the tabernacle, 
could not perish. You can't stand by and watch someone you love perish in a fire. And that's what he said. And he went on to say, as firefighters, we often see casualties from fire, and we know its effects. This is why I sought to preserve, above all, the real presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. But then the next thing he says kind of gives me chills. This is what he said. Now, when the fire of the northern bell tower was attacking, we started to fear losing that northern bell tower. That was exactly the time that I rescued the Blessed Sacrament. And I did what I simply did um, with Jesus. I didn't leave Jesus. I took the opportunity to perform a benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. So he took the Eucharist out of the tabernacle, and he blessed with the chalice present holding the Eucharist. He blessed the whole cathedral in the sign of the cross, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, here I was completely alone in the cathedral, in the middle of burning debris falling down from the ceiling. And I called upon Jesus to help us and save his home. It was probably both this and the excellent work of the firefighters that stopped the fire, ultimately leading to the rescuing of the northern bell tower and subsequently of the other one. So though the spire crashed and burned, the two bell tower spires were preserved. He gives credit to the great work of the firefighters and to the Lord Jesus when he blessed that tabernacle, the blessed with the Holy Eucharist, the church. The fire stopped in its tracks. You know, when, you, when I think of this story, you know, sometimes we think we are saving Jesus. And it's really... It's he is saving us. The beginning of this gospel that we just heard, it says, the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way. They recounted. You know that they recounted how they were walking on the road to Emmaus and how they had encountered Jesus on the way, but they didn't recognize him until they were at the the place where the travelers, travelers lodge and then he broke the bread and then he disappeared as that's when they realized even though perhaps they should have realized it when their hearts were burning on, along the way they recounted it's that phrase that jumps off the page for me it's important for us to do this to recount just like Father Fournier of the of the fire department of the city of Paris, the grace of, of God's victory becomes more clear to us and more deeply in our souls when we recount it. It enriches not only the people we tell, it enriches our own selves. I love the way St. Augustine described evangelization. He just simply said, evangelization is one heart setting another heart on fire. We could do this more. It helps build us up and builds others up when we recount what Jesus has done for me. Pope Francis has, has talked about the, the, the risk, the danger of spiritual amnesia, forgetting what the Lord has done for us. And he goes on to say it would be good for all of us to ask for the grace to preserve memory of everything the Lord has done in my life, of how he loved me so much, and from that memory to go forward. That's what Father Fournier did, what he calls all of us to do. I think that's what St. Paul meant when he said to the young Bishop Timothy, we can read this in his first letter, he just simply says, remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Remember Jesus who accompanied me up to now and will accompany me until the moment when I must appear before him in glory. What a beautiful, simple phrase, remember Jesus Christ. But then he comes. That's what he does. 
He breaks into our lives and he comes with his blessings. And he comes precisely when they are recounting. That's when he does it. If you're ever recounting to others what Jesus did for you, look around. And you'll be coming. He loves to come. He loves to be invited. And sometimes he comes when he's not invited. Or maybe it's more clear to say and more true to say that sometimes our recounting of what he's done is actually the inviting. There's something you know, very realistic about this reading. I mean, in that appearing of Jesus, while the two disciples are recounting what happened to them on the way, he stands in their midst. But their vision is like blurred. They can't quite capture it. So they, they're terrified. They don't get it. Sometimes the way Jesus appears is like the old Polaroid cameras. Remember those? Well, recently I was amazed they're coming back, the Polaroids. They're much smaller. I don't understand that. But you see those Polaroids? Remember you take it and all of a sudden it would come out. But it would just be white. You, you couldn't see it. And then you'd go like this, what they say you weren't supposed to do. Didn't help it. But it seems like that's what you had to do. And then slowly but surely, the image goes from pure white, and the colors start to come forward. And you realize what's in the photo. That's happening to the apostles here. When he appears to them, they're terrified. They think it's a ghost. It literally says it's a ghost. Um, notice that, it, that the terror that they experience is not because of a, a horrible storm when the waves are crashing over the edge of the boat. It's not, you know, a villain comes in. There's not an armed stranger, not an enemy, not a monster that comes in. It's not any danger that startles and terrifies them. It's Jesus himself. They see a threat where there's actually just a blessing. In fact, the greatest of blessings is, is coming for them. Maybe it's sort of like Adam. After he had, and his wife had, eaten the fruit of the tree that they were forbidden to eat. When, when God comes, Adam, where are you? He hid himself. There's something about all sin that's represented in Adam's hiding of himself. This thought that, that somehow I can hide from God. We can't hide from God. And, and yet somehow we think we can. All sin is in some ways an attempt to hide from God. And the one he most loves is somehow a threat, an enemy. Someone to be afraid of. And it remains true that the cave that you most fear to enter contains the treasure that you most desire. The thing that you most fear, you know, hides the blessing that you most need. You know, the thing that, uh, that seems to be so frightening is actually, actually what a heart is longing for. I guess there's the, a corollary to this that sometimes when you, when you ask for something that in, in a selfish way, the worst thing that can possibly happen to you is that you get what you selfishly asked for. It's a disaster. But that's not the topic for today. Here's Jesus, the one whose very mercy puts an end to, to all evil eventually. And here they are screaming in fear of absolute goodness. How does, how does God respond? How does Jesus respond to their thinking that he's a ghost? Something surprising. He shows them his wounds. Isn't that great? You know, certainly as a priest, uh, we have to visit lots of sick people. All the time we go to the hospital. Every day. 
We, we anoint people. And I've noticed over the course of the year something that I've not really understood, that a lot of times when you go to visit someone after surgery, they feel a great need to, like, show you their scar. Father, look what they did to me, you know? <laughs> Like, look at, look at my knee. I had knee surgery. Look. But that's what Jesus does. He shows them his hands and his feet. Like, that's what he does. Of course, it's, it shows the wounds because, it, I mean, it certainly wasn't, look what you did to me. He could have said that. Y'all ran away. No, it was to prove that it was really him, risen from the dead, not anybody else, not an imposter. Look, um... I took one for the team, but I don't hold it against you. It, it proves that it was him. You know, I, I wish I had more time to watch baseball, but I did happen to be watching on July 1st, 2004. You know, baseball fans in general, and Yankee fans in particular, will remember this scene. They were playing against their arch rivals, right? The Red Sox, yeah. Socks. And uh, there was runners on second and third. Remember this? Trot Nixon hits a little blooper into foul territory, into the, into the stands uh, on the third base side. You, I see some of you nodding because you remember this. Derek Jeter ran from shortstop and uh, dove two or three rows into the benches. You, you just couldn't see from the video. You just see his feet flying up behind him. And uh, he disappeared in, in the ground. And uh, um, he came up. His face was bloodied. But he came out with the ball in his glove and he held it up. Remember that? And that was the proof. That was the proof that he caught it. Trot Nixon was out. And the end of the inning. And uh, the proof that that man standing before the apostles is that same Jesus is the fact that he has the wounds in his hands. He's doing anything to prove to his disciples that he is alive and that he loves them, that he loves us. He breaks through our despair with everything in his arsenal. It was a famous French writer, George Bernanos. He wrote the Diary of a Country Priest. In that, in that book, he has this great line. He says, hope is despair that's been overcome. Hope is despair that's been overcome. And that's exactly what these apostles have now. One last point. Um, to give the final proof to them that he is risen from the dead and he's real, what does he do? He eats in front of his disciples. Now, it sounded like my 18-year-old nephew. What does Jesus say? Do you have anything here to eat? <laughs> Jesus didn't need to, to eat. I mean, uh, it's not so much maybe that he's hungry. But to prove that he's not a ghost, because you know what happens when, you know what happens when a, when a ghost tries to eat something. Like it goes to, the, but it is, again, you see it on the floor because a ghost can't eat anything. I mean, that's what I learned from Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> but in order to do that, he didn't just take it, that piece of baked fish. Um, it was. Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who said that whenever Christ wants to give us a great favor, he often starts by asking for one. And he humbles himself very simple, like begging for food. Do you have something to eat? Can you give me some food to eat? Ultimately, I know he wants us to feed him with our love. <laughs> we think we're doing him a favor, and he ends up Saving us. <laughs> That's what Father Fournier said. He said, we think we're saving him, but he's saving us. It was St. John Vianney, the patron saint of, of parish priests, 
who said, God is quicker to forgive than a mother is to snatch her child from the fire. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, let us allow him to snatch us for himself. And we will forever recount how we recognized him in the breaking of the bread. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus was made known in the breaking of the bread. Our minds and hearts are open as we pray that the church be ever thankful for the gifts of the earth and the graces that flow from the real presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That government leaders revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the members of this congregation united in love and service, be perfected in the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our children be guided by the Holy Spirit and come to know and love Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Novelto Ase, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Juana Antonia Goris, Angelo Gonzalez, Jennifer Rodriguez, Mary Reyes, Raymond Soche, Maximina Gomera, and for the personal intentions of Jonathan Rodriguez, Marino Felix, and Thomas Gardner, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hear us as stewards of these Easter mysteries. We offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Alleluia, number one, number 570, 570, and breaking bread.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. God, the Lord, and all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as if you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they he acclaim. Holy, holy. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Norberto Arce, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all serve the Lord with the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements, everyone. I just want to apologize by starting off. It's a little cool in here. I'm not sure what happened. The heat hasn't been working. It's a little cold. It's not your imagination. Um, it was... <laughs> Uh, the, the thermostat says the heat is on, but it's clearly not coming. So we turned off the blowers at least so that the, they're not blowing cold air on us. Um, and maybe I can distract you by just drawing your attention to one interesting fact. You know, this coming four months from today is the 14th of September, the Feast of the Holy Cross. And, um, oh, that's five months from now. Sorry, five months from now is the Feast of the Holy Cross. And it happens also to be it's our parish feast, but it's going to be the 800th, 800th anniversary of the stigmata of St. Francis of Assisi. You know, oh, wow. you can see him here. Uh, I don't see him that much during Mass because my back is there. But what I do get to see is if you look back at the massive stained glass window we have in the back of the church, right in the middle, but a little bit offset, is the Lord Jesus showing his wounds like he does in the Gospel today, and St. Francis of Assisi showing his wounds. So that 800th anniversary is coming up, and it's, it's amazing to look there that right below it is the statue of the Lord Jesus with the wounds in his hands, the risen Lord Jesus. I, all, all mass long, I get to look at those three images, and um, I just it's remarkable. As we celebrate the Year of Children, we're going to be looking forward to the Feast of the Holy Cross on the 14th of September, our parish feast, but also notably marked that it's the uh, 800th, 800th anniversary of the stigmata of, of St. Francis of Assisi. Speaking of the year of children, um, in the bulletin you'll see information about that free community baptism on June 15th, how to sign up. If you know a family that has a child five or younger, hasn't reached first grade yet to be baptized, this is their opportunity. Um, everything is for free for them including the celebration, the food, the party, afterwards. Um, this week also I want to mention that you'll be seeing outside the installation of the new banners. They've arrived, we just have to get them up. And you remember for the year of marriage, we had banners for, for promoting the year of marriage. Well, it's the year of children, we're going to have banners promoting the year of children. And in the center of each banner, you're going to see the image of different child children saints. Um, eight different saints or eight or nine different saints you'll see, including you know the one we have over here, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, um, who is the patron saint of our year for children. We're asking her intercession. We're asking her intercession for the celebration today um, for, for Easter for children at, 12 and af at and after the 1230 Mass. But I just wanted to give you the explanation. When you see the banners going up this week, you'll, you'll understand and see if any one of those saints, I encourage you, or if you have children or grandchildren, to like look up the names of those individual saints and see if um, there's a story there that might enrich us for the year of children. Finally, uh, in this year of children, we have our young people have their youth retreat for high school kids. It's starting the 3rd and ends on the 4th, of 3rd, 4th, 5th of May in our own retreat house. It's a two-night, three-day retreat cost is $100, and um, at the conclusion of the Mass, if you know a teenager, or if you are a teenager, look for our Nicole, our altar server in red and white, and she'll be, uh, she'll, she'll be happy to make sure you could have information about, or, or gift you a ticket for the, for the retreat May 3rd, 4th, and 5th for high school kids. Um, we just, someone, Deacon told me that uh, Marlon Williams is celebrating her birthday today. Is, uh, oh, oh, yeah, oh, please come up, Marlon. We'd love to give you a nice birthday blessing. <laughs> like Michael and Christine also have a birthday? Uh, uh, okay. 
Well, let's, let's, when the husband and wife celebrate the birthday together, it makes it easy to remember, right, Michael? Yeah. Let us extend our right hand in blessing over these beloved young people. <coughs> Heavenly Father, as these your servants, Marla, Christina, Michael, celebrate their birthday this week, thank you, Lord. May the occasion of their birth, the anniversary of their birth, be for all of us a reminder of your goodness and kindness to us. Show yourself to them, Lord. Reveal yourself as you did to those apostles in the upper room on that day of Easter Sunday. And bless them with your peace, not just today, not just this week, but their entire lives. And may God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us all please stand for our final blessing in our St. Michael prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all of the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruination of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, number 386 in Breaking Bread. Go out, go out. Shut off the sound system and gently pull out the yellow cords so I can put them away. Yeah, shut it off.